Right, so in this video we're going to generalize the second derivative test also to higher dimensions, in particular to two dimensions. So I'll just remind you of the 1D case that we saw near the start of the course. So the second derivative test is for finding maximum and minimums of a function. So if you've got a function looks something like this, okay, this function has some local minima like this, local maximum like this. Okay, and the second derivative test was a set of conditions um, for the function to have these maximum and minima. So the local minima, the condition was that df by dx is zero and its second derivative dx squared should be greater than zero. Okay, and that defines a minimum and the maximum, the first derivative is zero and the second derivative should be less than zero. Okay, and that defines a minimum. Right. So that was the second derivative test in one dimension. So what we want to do now is to do something similar in two dimensions. So we want to find a test which will tell you where the function is locally maximum or locally minimum. So on this function I started with, you can see that the maximum is somewhere around here, right? So it has a local maximum at this point here. So at local max or min. So the first condition is very similar to the 1D case. The function, if it's maximum or minimum here, must be flat here, right? It must have zero gradient. So this means that df by dx should be zero. That means it's flat in this direction. And also df by dy should be zero, which means it's flat in that direction. Right? So you can write these two terms together in a single equation just by saying that the, gra the gradient of f should be zero at this point. So that tells you that the function is flat. For a local maximum, what else do we need? So from the one-dimensional case, you might guess again the condition local maximum should be that d2f by dx squared is less than zero and d2f by dy squared is less than zero. However, this is not enough. So even though you may have these conditions true, that's not enough to guarantee you that it's a maximum in two dimensions. So my favorite example of this is the following function, f of x and y is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 4xy. Okay, um, okay. so if, if we're talking about maximums, okay, let me just change this to minus. Okay, because I've been talking about my maximum so far, okay. So then you can check that this condition is okay at zero, that x equals y equals zero. This is true, this is true, this is true, and this is true. However, this is not a maximum. So how do we know it's not a maximum? Look at what happens if x equals y. Okay? If x equals y, then f of x, x is equal to minus x squared minus y squared plus 4 x, y, but these are just all equal to x squared. So this is equal to 2x squared, um, which obviously does not have a maximum when x equals 0. It has a minimum when x equals 0. Okay, so it's a bit risky to try and draw this function, but let me have a go. Um, what does this function look like? Here is x and y. I draw the function up here. So at 0 it's equal to 0 and then along the x-axis it goes down like x squared and along the y-axis it goes down like y minus y squared like this. So these ways it looks like a maximum. However, along the line x equals y, that's this line here, it actually curves up like this. Okay. So the function along this line here curves up and it's only along this way it goes down and this way it goes down. So this is clearly not a maximum, this point here. So therefore, that means that these two conditions are not enough 
to guarantee a maximum. So what we're going to show you in this video is what is enough to guarantee you a maximum. Okay, let me continue working over here then. So, what is the definition of a maximum? The definition of a maximum is if you move away from it, then you go down, right? If you move away from it, you go down. So what you need is that the value of the function f at x plus delta x and y plus delta y should be strictly less than the value of the function f at x and y. Okay, and this should be true for small enough delta x delta y. Okay, now we can write this condition by doing a Taylor expansion of this term on the left. Okay. So if we Taylor expand this term, then this is equal to f of xy plus the vector delta x delta y dot grad f. Okay, but this one is equal to zero because we already decided that grad f is equal to zero. So this term is equal to zero. And the next term is the second order term, which is one over two times delta x delta y dot grad squared times f. Okay, and from the video on the Taylor series we worked out the formula for this. This is equal to a half um, delta x squared d2f by dx squared plus delta x delta y d2f by dx dy plus a half delta y squared d2f by dy squared. If you look at the video on Taylor series, you'll see that we derived this formula for the second order term here. Okay. okay, and then plus smaller terms. Right, so for a maximum, we need this to be less than f of x. And you see we've got f of x here. So therefore, this second order term must be negative. So in order to have a maximum, what we need is that a half delta x squared d2f by dx squared plus delta x delta y d2f by dx dy plus a half delta y squared d2. This should be less than zero, and this should be true whichever direction you're looking in. So this should be true for all delta x delta y, small enough. So you're close to the point. Okay. So how can we ensure that this is always less than or equal to zero? Um, well, I'll, I'll show you how to do it. You can rewrite this condition slightly. If I assume that um, delta y is not equal to zero, then I can divide by delta y squared and multiply by two. Then we get the following equation. You get that d2f by dx squared times delta x over delta y squared plus 2 d2f by dx dy divided by delta y squared, so times delta x over delta y plus d2f by dy squared should be less than zero. And these second derivatives here are just numbers. Then you see what you've got then is a quadratic equation in delta x over delta y. So what we need is that this quadratic equation should always be less than zero. 
So now I want to think about under what conditions is a quadratic equation less than zero. So the general form of a quadratic equation is a times c squared plus b times c plus c. Okay. So what does this function look like? First of all, if a is greater than zero, then the function looks something like this. Right? And if a is less than zero, then the function looks something like this. Okay. So first of all, we want the function to always be less than zero, so therefore we want this case, right? We want the case where the coefficient a is less than zero. So if you look at the the function we have here, this one, the coefficient a is this, right? So the first thing you need is that d2f by dx squared should be less than zero. Okay. However, that's not enough because it could look like this, but also it could look something like this, and then you see it has regions where it's positive. So not only do you need that a is less than zero, you also need that the function has no solutions equal to zero. Then that determines that it's below the axis here. Okay. So the other thing you need is that a z squared plus b z plus c equals zero has no solutions. Because if it has solutions, then that means that there's this part here where it's greater than zero. So the quadratic formula tells you the solution to this equation is c equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. So this has no real solutions when this part is imaginary. So no real solutions when b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, right? Because then this is negative and the square root of a negative number is an imaginary number, not a real number. Okay, so this is the next thing that you need. You need that this is true as well. Okay, so what does that mean in our quadratic equation here? So this one is equal to a, this is equal to b, and this is equal to c. Okay, so a is d to f by dx squared, b is 2 d to f by dx dy, and c is d to f by dy squared. Okay. So this one gives you the condition for d to f by dx dy squared minus 4 d to f by dx squared times d to f by dy squared should be less than 0. Okay, so obviously the factors that 4 cancel. So therefore your condition for the maximum is as follows. First derivatives are 0, so df by dx equals df by dy equals 0. Next condition is this one. Okay, So we did it for x, there's nothing special about x, so it also works if you do it for y. So one of these two. And then the final condition you need is this one, which means that d2f by dx dy squared minus d2f by dx squared d2f by dy squared. Sorry. This is less than zero, sorry, not equal to zero. And this should also be less than zero. And there you have it. So provided these conditions are true, you know that you have a local maximum of the function. Okay. So that's the condition for a local maximum. The condition for a local minimum is the same, except that these become greater than. Okay. So this is greater than, greater than. This one stays less than, because this is about having no real solutions. Okay. Okay. So maybe I'll write it out again, just to be clear. Conditions. For a minimum. Okay, so the first condition is the same. The second condition is changed.
and the final condition is the same. Right, so these define what's known as the second derivative test in two dimensions, right? If you want to find whether a function has a minimum or a maximum, you need to check the first derivatives as zero and then the second derivatives in this way. Okay, so in the next video, I'll do some examples of this.